To start with, this is a mirrorless camera, compact in size, interchangeable lenses. In each of those lenses is an aperture, which is our first way of controlling the light coming into the sensor. And so the aperture is a great way for controlling light, as I say, because as you turn the aperture ring, you can either open up or close down the aperture, doubling or letting in half as much with each of these f-stop settings. The other thing that the f-stops control is your depth of field. So if you have a lens that goes down to 1.4, for instance, you can get very shallow depth of field as the red indicators over on the right-hand side indicate. As we stop our aperture down, we can increase our depth of field. Each image needs its own unique depth of field according to your direction. And at f22, we're gonna get great depth of field. So great technique to know about and master. Now, as the light comes in towards the sensor, it needs to get past the shutter unit on the camera. So the shutter unit needs to be open so that light can get to the sensor so that you can see what's going on on the LCD screen on the back of the camera or in the EVF for you to look at through the viewfinder. Now, when it comes time to take a photo, the camera's gonna need to go through a little bit of a gyration here. It's gonna need to close the shutter, prepare the sensor for shooting. This is your exposure, and then it closes with the second shutter. That way each pixel is exposed for exactly the same amount of time. And then it needs to reopen again so that you can see and compose the next shot. So there's a lot going in there in very short period of time. And the shutter speeds are another great way of controlling light in the camera, as well as motion of either you holding the camera or subjects that you're photographing. And so lots of different shutter speeds are available and we'll talk more about those in an upcoming section. So these are your basic components of the mirrorless camera. And one of the most important in there is the image sensor's size. And so there's a lot of different sizes of image sensors out on the market. The Fuji uses what I would consider kind of a medium size. It's not the largest, it's not the smallest. One of the largest or one of the larger ones out there is the 35 millimeter film based one, also known as a full frame sensor. Uh, 35 millimeter film was just kind of a happy medium for many years, so it's been a very popular standard. Fuji went with a little bit smaller size sensor, and that's why their cameras and lenses are able to be a little bit smaller and lighter weight than many other things out on the market. And so it's a good in-between, fits a lot of different purposes. Now, the primary controls that you're gonna to wanna to know about on the camera, first up is the on and off, which does have a very quick startup time, by the way. When you turn it on, there is a little shake that the sensor does uh, so that it gets dust off this, it, itself. And the problem with dust on the sensor is that light will not get to the pixels and you'll end up with black spots in the same spot on each of the photos. And so this is a good way of knocking off any easy dust that gets in there when you are changing lenses. Now it's quite possible that something gets in there that kind of sticks to it a little bit and you'll need to go through something a little bit more physical in order to knock that off. And I will talk about that in more detail later in the class in the menu section. The front dial of the camera is one that we will use frequently to change features, but be aware that it is also a button. So you can turn it and push on it to perform different functions. And the same can be said for the rear command dial on the camera. Uh, we'll be using that to adjust various settings, but it's also a button you can press to activate yet different ones. The selector on the back of the camera is how we're gonna mainly control our navigation through the menu system. So up, down, left, right, pretty simple controls there. There's an OK button when we want to select, highlight, or confirm a setting in the menu, for instance. The focus stick is gonna be primarily used for moving the focusing point around, but we can also navigate through the menu and in other places with it as well. So we have two different controls. They're sometimes interchangeable, sometimes they're different. The camera also has a touch screen that can be used in a variety of modes, playback, shooting, for instance, and there's a lot of common gestures that you use on other screen devices. And so this is something that does not need to be used, but can be completely turned off or you can use it for a lot of things. It really depends on your personal feelings and how much you like to use the touch screen. A very important mode is the stills movie dial on this. We spoke briefly about this before. 
But the camera has two very different operations. One is in the movie mode and one is in the still mode. And sometimes we wanna have our cameras set up very differently between the two and be able to just flip the switch so that we can get it into that mode. Shutter speeds, focusing are examples of things that you might have very different between movie and stills. And so we're gonna have the camera in the stills mode for most of this class. I do have a menu or a movie section in this class where we talk about all the movie functions in one place. And so in that case, we'll be in the movie mode for sure. All right, the shutter release on this camera is notably quieter than on previous cameras. And so for those of you who like to operate in a stealth environment, this is one of the quietest cameras out on the market. The shutter release does have the two stage device that most cameras have, which means when you press down halfway, it's going to autofocus the camera. It's gonna turn on the light meter. If the camera was asleep, it will wake it up uh, so that it's ready to shoot. And if you happen to be in the menu and you're lost in there or you just wanna get out quickly, you can just press halfway down on the shutter release and it will immediately kick you back into a shooting mode. And so you wanna get very comfortable with that in the halfway position because it's a good way to wake the camera up and get everything ready so that the picture can be taken quickly afterwards. Now, the shutter release on it is threaded so that you can stick in a very old school cable release. And so these mechanical cable releases have been used on 8x10 view cameras, cameras from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Uh, they've been going around for a long time. These cable releases are cheap, they're simple, they're easy to work with. Uh, if you buy a cheap one, they do wear out. So I, if, you, if you like using one of these mechanical ones, get a good one, it'll last you decades. Uh, so it's just one of the two different ways that we'll be able to trigger the shutter release, but uh, it's kind of one of the cool old school factors of the Fuji camera. All right, so when you record images with a digital camera, it records a file. And there's two different types of files that you can get out of this camera, a RAW and a JPEG. The RAW is gonna give you the original information. It's gonna give you the greatest latitude in uh, brightness. So if you want to brighten up the shadows, if you want to control the highlights, the raw image gives you the most versatility to work with. The file size is a little bit larger and it's a proprietary format. So you're going to need either Fuji software to look at it or somebody else like Adobe's Lightroom or Photoshop or many other different programs out there in order to read it. And that's the type of file that most serious photographers shoot with because it gives them the most to work with after the fact. Now the JPEGs from this camera are really very good. They're very, very high quality and there's a lot of Fuji shooters who swear by just shooting JPEGs because they're so good. But the fact is, is they're still not as good as the original raw information. It's just that Fuji does do a very good job with the JPEGs. Now JPEGs, as I'm sure most all of you know, is a very common small file format that's very easily to transfer, email somebody, post on a website. It's a very versatile format. Pretty much every photographer works with JPEGs in one form or another um, quite frequently. I like to shoot raw, make my adjustments, export a JPEG, and then use that for a variety of reasons. So the camera has the ability to shoot one, the other, or both. Let's take a look at the options. So the fine and normal refer to JPEGs. They're not clearly labeled as that, but that's what they are. And so if you wanna shoot a JPEG, fine or normal, uh, and that's gonna be, there's gonna be a difference with the compression of it. So they're the same resolution. They're both 26 megapixels. It's just the normal has been compressed and the camera throws away some information that you may not need. Oftentimes, you know, subtle little uh, areas in the shadows or the highlights, you may not be able to recover as easily if you're doing that. If you are shooting JPEG, I encourage you to shoot the fine quality JPEG. The main file that I would recommend you shooting is the RAW file format, which with Fuji is gonna be known as an RAF file. It's 26 megapixels. It's gonna contain the most amount of dynamic range and information, and when you are working with images in post-production, whether you're editing the image, brightening the shadows, printing the image, this is where the raw file is gonna be the most helpful. You can also shoot raw plus JPEG. You can either do that with a raw fine quality JPEG or a raw and a normal quality JPEG. And for every photo you take, you will get two images. 
I don't recommend doing this unless there is a specific reason to do it. If you don't have a computer that works with raw images yet, and that's coming down the road, and you wanna work with JPEGs now, and you wanna go back and shoot with the RAWs when you get your new computer, that's a good reason. If somebody else is gonna go use the JPEGs, you know, to post them on a website right away while you work on the RAWs, yeah, that's a good reason. Uh, another good one is if you just like the film simulations and some of the things that you can do with JPEG images in the camera, and you wanna get a good quality JPEG the way Fuji thinks it should look, and you wanna get your RAW, and that way you can match the two up later and go, well, I wanna get the RAW so I can do it. Fuji did to it, but then take it a little bit further. You could do that as well. I wouldn't needlessly shoot in RAW versus JPEG because if you have a RAW, you can create a JPEG. If you have a JPEG, you can't make a RAW out of it. Um, and so RAW is always gonna be the higher quality format. So let's go ahead and get our cameras set up. Let me get mine into the menu mode here. And we're gonna navigate our way over to the image quality. So on the left-hand side, you can go up and down to the IQ mode. Now the first image size uh, is not what we're talking about right now. We're gonna deal with this one a little bit later in the class. It's image quality. And the F right there indicates it's at a fine quality JPEG. And so if we come over here, we got fine, normal, fine plus raw. So normally I would shoot raw and that's what I'm gonna set mine to right now. Um, if you just wanna shoot JPEGs, I would probably be in fine. If you wanna shoot raw plus a JPEG, you could choose either one of these. It depends on what you're using with that JPEG. Uh, if you're mostly gonna be relying on the raw, you could shoot raw plus normal and you save a little bit of file space. But I'm gonna go ahead and put mine in raw for right now. And so now you can see it is currently set at raw for image quality. Hopefully you've got your camera set up now the way that you want it to shoot as we've got a lot more to come in this class and this is just the first of important settings that we're gonna be making. So that's your camera basics. You've got your camera all lined up. We are ready for some big sections coming up. We've got exposure, focus, drive coming up next and they're all gonna have a ton of information for you.